What's up everybody, it's your boy Meme here. For breakfast, I had three pieces of pizza, and I also had some coffee. Um, I also had some caffeine gum earlier. Um, so I'm a little wired right now. Uh, but because of this, I um, actually have some some plans. I have some interesting things to say. So um, I've been watching this uh, this uh, Casey Neistat uh, interview on this podcast called Flagrant, um, which I don't know. It's actually funny because you know this podcast is obviously very successful. Like you can see how many how many views they have. You know, um, and so you know. Sometimes, you know, when I was on YouTube Shorts or like TikTok or something, I would see clips from this podcast because, you know, successful podcasts get clipped, you know? Um, and it's actually, <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing, but I thought this guy was Internet Shaquille. I thought, I thought, I thought that, I thought this guy was, was this guy. And I just think that's very funny. Um, I, like, I thought this guy had a podcast and this is what it was. And it was like more successful than his YouTube channel. Um, but it's just very funny, and I, but I don't know. They do look a little similar. Like I don't know. Like especially with the with the mustache. Like I don't know. They don't look dissimilar. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, this is really interesting. I kind of like Casey Neistat. Um, it's interesting because I remember when Casey Neistat was sort of the golden boy of, of YouTube. Uh, it was kind of in the same way Mr. Beast is now. Um, of course, they make wildly different content, but you know, uh, the pe people would think of Mr. Uh, people would think of YouTube and they would think of Casey Neistat the same way people think of YouTube and they think of uh, Mr. Beast now, uh, at least in America, you know? Um, and uh, it's weird because now um, it seems like the, the, um, it seems like the, the zeitgeist right now around Casey Neistat is that he's like an asshole. Um, which is strange. Uh, I don't know how that happened. Um, I think, uh, I don't know. Um, I remember he made a couple tweets that were like worded kind of badly. There were, there were like some very Asmongold-esque tweets about homeless people um, and just stuff like that. Uh, and he seems like kind of an old school type guy, um, but I don't mind him. Uh, it's, you know, I've talked about this in the past, but you know, he used to work for Tom Sachs as well as his brother Van Neistat. Um, and, you know, you could see that reflected in a lot of his work. Um, and, you know, you look at a lot of Tom Sachs's work and, you know, uh, it looks a lot like um, the stuff that Casey Neistat would do in his videos, you know, um, and you could just sort of tell. Um, and of course, you know, uh, there's a lot more of a direct lineage with Van rather than Casey, with, rather than Casey, but like, you know, it's still, it's still obvious, you know. Um, and anyway, so, you know, I was thinking of Casey Neistat, and I was like, oh, Casey Neistat did Beam. Like, he he ran Beam, that app where, um, for those of you who don't know, Beam was this app, and I didn't have it at the time, but my buddy uh, RJ did um, uh, back in, I think, late elementary school, early middle school, and the whole gimmick of the app was that it was like, it was a lot like TikTok, um, and I'm gonna get more into that later. Um, it actually wasn't like TikTok, like content wasn't served to you by scrolling. Um, but it was uh, interesting because the only way you could record a video, like the way you could record a video to send it to your friends was to go like this. Um, so you couldn't like look at the screen when you were recording. And the whole gimmick of the app was that it's like, you know, it's like beam, like be me. Like this is my POV of like my authentic life. It was sort of like, it was also a little like be real. It was really interesting. Um, and it ended up shutting down. Um, and then the company Beam got sold to CNN uh, because they ended up doing like news. Um, they ended up doing this channel called called uh, Beam News. Um, and looking at it, um, it seems like it started out as like just like news about the company Beam, like what's going on at Beam. Uh, and it was just had Casey in it. But eventually they started doing like like news broadly like it was a news from beam not news about beam you know um and there's this guy named lou um and he just you know made a lot of really interesting videos and it's such a it feels very um maybe i'm drawing a maybe i'm seeing things that aren't there but i feel like it's a very pre-covid type uh piece of content like this is the last video they uploaded and it was uploaded in august of 2019 like right before covid came out um like right before covid started existing um, and it feels very like 
like a vergy sort of like vicey like like pre-covid sort of um like liberal news um and it's it's just very interesting um and something i noticed is that beam has a very similar branding to tiktok um you know they were founded in in 2014 and they have like just obviously they don't just have the tiktok logo but that looks you know especially the, these like two circles like this venn diagram type thing it just kind of looks like the tiktok logo um and especially like you know at the very end of this video there's um it says like beam made in new york city you know and it's got like a little effect on nyc and it's like a glitch effect like how tiktok how, like how the end of a uh, tiktok videos are it shows like the tiktok logo and it kind of glitches and it's like tiktok and then it's like at someone um at the person who made the video unless somebody stole it um but it's, it's just interesting to me um how the beam logo just looked a lot like tiktok's logo and their branding and like their their brand image broadly was like very tiktok-esque and it was just very strange um and anyway it sucks that these guys uh stop making videos because you know they they were they were interesting um they were like well made and um you know i feel like it was i didn't you know i wish something like this like this kind of content existed nowadays um just like this sort of format because i feel like i would be a lot more uh, interested in it now um but you know at the time i was watching it when it came out and I was, well, that was five years ago, I was 14, and I didn't really know, like, like fixing the war on drugs, like, I don't, I don't know what they're talking about. I mean, I sort of vaguely know, I would say I, I knew more than the average 14-year-old, uh, but it's like, you know, like, obviously, like, um, I know less than I do now, and, you know, I, I uh, the, the content was less valuable than me at the time, and, and because news is such a current day thing, um, it makes sense that it was, since news is such a current day thing it sucks that this type of stuff isn't being made now like you never really see like a 10 minute news video uh it's always like 30 minutes now i'm not watching a 30 minute video unless it's a unless it's an atrioc big a clips reaction you know like i don't know um but anyway yeah this is all sort of all over the place uh, but i just find this very very interesting um i'm supposed to do some score today um, I'm gonna be finishing my uh, stupid <laughs> assignment that I uh, talked about last night um, about it getting the season from the month and the day. Um, uh, something I really want to fix is I really have to use the restroom, so I'm gonna try and be fast here. Um, one thing I'm I'm trying to fix is I used to have this thing work where I click on this and it connects my AirPods, um, and then I click on it and it disconnects my AirPods. And ever since I did that brown noise thing, I realized how easy it would be. And the way I did this in the past was I asked ChatGPT to make the script, which is actually quite helpful and useful for a lot of uh, like very simple bash scripts. But now that I know enough bash to write these simple bash scripts, I can usually write them better than ChatGPT. Because even if you ask ChatGPT to do something and it does it correctly, it does it in like a weird way. Um, and it's like not how I would do it. You know, it's it's just very um, strange. You know, you can tell it's just sort of like it get you know AI generated code kind of gives a certain vibe, and it's like written. You know, it does the thing you want it to do, but it's like um, very strange. You know, I don't, I don't know how else to describe it. Um, and I think I could probably do it better than how uh, I guess GPT four the time did it. Maybe you know, maybe I can make it, and then I can ask GPT four out to do it, and then I can see um, how they compare. But I presume that my code would look cleaner. As a bash script, you know, it's, it's not even code. My face is way too white because I set the exposure for the beginning of this video and now the weather has changed and so the natural light makes my skin way too white. But anyway, um, another thing I want to work on is my thumbnails. If you look at the link to my thumbnails in the description, you'll notice that a lot of them are kind of outdated. I don't have my new thumbnails on there and it's because I haven't really gotten the script to upload them to GitHub correctly. Um, so I'm going to work on that too.